the, the system of music in, in Manchester at the time for blues, uh, it was mainly, there's mainly soul clubs um, in this area. So to play blues, we had to get a gig. We used to say we were a soul band. In fact, we had a blues band called The Soul Set to, to get the gigs. And then we play a couple of John Mayle tunes and people would think, I'm not quite sure what this is. And it was, a, a, as Alexis once said, it's a great way to learn because nobody wants to listen. So it was quite often you'd do the gig, there'd be eight people. And they, they'd all have gone by the end of the night because they don't know what you're playing. And so you've got loads of time to practice, which is, doesn't happen now. You know, if you're, if you're just starting off a new band, you've got to have a CD out, you've got to be selling it, you've got to be doing a big fan. You did, but you'd no backup, you know. So when we started to play with other musicians, we did it mainly to get our foot on the ladder because we couldn't get enough audiences in to see our band. So we, I would invite people to play with us and we'd pay them. Like, like Graham Bond and people like this to do it. So we were getting fantastic experience. So we were becoming more or less a house band for musicians. A bit, again, a bit like Alexis Chris Barber did with Bill Brunzi when they came over, Bill Brunzi, Muddy Waters, these people. And the Yardbirds had, had done Sonny Boy Williamson, I think, you know. So there was plenty of experience with British musicians playing with Americans, because they obviously couldn't afford to bring their own musicians, it wasn't feasible. We, we, we used to accept everything, even uh, Cajun bands, you know, which we'd never played. And we did a, a, a gig with a, a guy called Rock in Sydney, who wrote Toot, Don't Mess With My Toot to it, and she so far, who was fantastic. He used to tell us about Elvis Presley going out with them for a night out, and he used to follow them. He said, he, he said Elvis had the walk we all had, you know, walking down the street with his collar up. He said there was about 20 black guys and one white guy at the back, you know. So Elvis was right into that. So we really, and then we, we did the Chuck Berry tour. Uh, we'd, anyone that came over or was in England, we'd do it. And occasionally then we'd go to Europe with them as well. When I got the first tour with Chuck Berry, I was absolutely thrilled because he was everybody's hero in, in, from, from the 60s onwards. Um, and I was so thrilled to meet him, but he seemed to be less thrilled to meet me at the time. So we, we did the, um, the show, and we did about four or five, and before he said hello, which I thought was a bit odd, I'd, I'd never quite seen that. Uh, but the thing, the difference, it was a big accolade, it was such an accolade to play with Chuck Berry in those days. Now he just seems to fall on anyone who's around, which is a bit sad really, you know, he just picks up musicians wherever he is. Um, I mean, the money's good for him, I suppose, you know, and he's getting, a, he's an older man, but at the time, he, uh, it was a great time to be in the band, but he's not the, the I can't say we were close. <laughs>